Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to talk about some forces that act from a distance. And we're looking at this girl, and what do you notice about her hair? What's going on with her hair? Yeah, slogan? It's getting like pushed back. It's getting pushed back. What do you notice, Isabella? It's like sticking up in the air. It's sticking up in the air. What do you think is causing her hair to stick up in the air like that, Claire? The shopping electricity that's in the thing that she's holding. That's a shock of electricity from the thing that she's holding. Olivia, what do you think it is? Oh. A force? A force is making it do that, you think. What do you think, John? I think it's a magnet or something on her that's making it either push or pull away. Okay, you think it's a magnet. So there's She's got a device. Now, some of you, I think some of you have got it in your book, and she's got like this big ball that she's touching, okay? And so this device produces a force that causes the girl's hair to stand up when she touches it. How does that force reach her hair? So that is an interesting question. Hector? Uh, maybe it's pointing up to her face, and maybe when it's up to your face, it blows your hair. Okay. You think that's what it does? What do you think, Evelyn? Um, maybe it shocks her. It's shocking her? Could you do that, Evelyn? Yes. The force is so strong that it's, it, it can do it from a distance. It can do it to your hair. If your little hair is going to go up, if it's really cold, if it's going to go up, if it's going to come up. Okay, those are some really great ideas. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about it and you're gonna learn a little bit more about what is happening there. So boys and girls, it has an electric charge. What's going on, and it's kind of hard to see it here. I don't know why we're not seeing the whole thing. You can't see the whole ball, but you can kind of see it in your book. So what she has is there's an electric charge on the surface of that sphere, which is transferred to the girl in the picture. And so the strands on her hair are getting that same electric charge that she has, and it's making her, the strands of her hair stand up. So that's what's happening. It's transferring an electric charge. Now, it's not strong enough, obviously, to hurt the girl. Not like if you put your finger in a socket, and that would do what? That would hurt you quite a bit. You would never want to do that. But she's got this special device that's giving her like, um, who has ever had static electricity? You know, maybe you, and it makes things stick to you, or um, have you ever had like a sock stuck to some of your laundry? That's static electricity. And static electricity will make your hair stand up or stick to things, yes, have you had that happen? One time, Alexander and I, we were throwing a balloon to each other, mm -hmm. and my hair went like up because it was touching the balloon. Yes, a, st a balloon is a good example where you could use static electricity, yes. Oh, I was doing things on a trampoline, and if my head touches the trampoline, it will get all static. Yes, static. Very good. So now what I want to talk to you about right now is some magnets. Who has ever played with some magnets? A lot of us, magnets are so much fun to play with. I love playing with magnets. When I was a little girl, I had these little dog magnets. One was a black Scotty and one was a white Scotty. And I loved playing with the magnets. They were so much fun. I had them for years and years and years. Probably if I looked for them, I still would have them. So we are going to watch as these magnets are placed on this rod. So get ready and we're gonna watch this. These donut magnets have very interesting properties. Watch as the magnets are collected and placed on the rod. When you stack them, you can see the magnets react. Why do they react this way? Those magnets seem to be floating. If you try to push them together, they push back. If you use enough force, you might even make them touch, but as soon as you let them go, they would push away again. That's a force you can't see that is acting from a distance. Oh, how interesting is that? Now, boys and girls, what do you see that's
that's happening in this video? Why do you think that's happening? There were those floating magnets. Why were those magnets floating? What do you think is happening in this video? Logan. There's a point between the magnets. There's that's a like pushing them up. That's pushing them up. Now, if I took those magnets and I forced them together, would they stay stuck together, do you think? No, they're not gonna stay stuck together. Now, what do you think is, so what I want you to do is I want you to write down in your book, what do you see happening to those magnets? Just write down what you think is happening. Write a sentence or two about what you think is going on with those magnets. What do you think is going on with those donut magnets? Okay. Do you want to tell me what you wrote down, Hector? Is that why your hand was up? Yeah. What did you write down, Hector? There's no force to push it up. To push it up. So it's pushing away. Yes, Claire. When, that, um, when, when they were pushed the opposite direction, they used force to push them up so they didn't stick together. They didn't stick together. Logan, what did you write? There was a force between each magnet pushing them apart. Pushing them apart. Yes, what did you write, Rose? Very good. Now, so by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to ask and answer questions about forces between objects because there's obviously some sort of force between those magnets that's keeping them from, from going together, right? From them meeting. And so you'll be able to ask and answer questions about forces between objects that are not in contact with each other. So our next lesson is magnets everywhere. So first, let's kind of talk about what is a magnet. It says stick to this. So you can turn your, do you need to turn your page or are you on that page? There you go. It says a magnet is an object that attracts things made from certain metals. You may have seen or used magnets at home or at school. So do you see any magnets in this classroom? Are there any magnets in this classroom? Or some magnets, Santiago? You have a magnet on your desk and it's doing what? What is that magnet doing? Yeah, it pulls up your name tag. Where else are some magnets around here? Where else is a magnet? John? Our desk on the side and the black part is all magnets. Um, you can stick, I don't know if it's a magnet itself, but you can put magnets on it. Where do we see some magnets, Bianca? Yeah, on your chalkboard, there's things. There's magnets on the chalkboard. Do we see some more magnets in here? Anybody else see some more magnets? Isabella? This is Patricia has things on the on the pole. Yeah, right here on the pole, there's some magnets. They're like the ones that are over there. Very good, so we have some magnets in the classroom. Now boys and girls, there are magnets in your house that you did not even know were there. So let's look at some of the magnets that are in your house. Oops, that are in your house. 
So we'll start on the lower floor of your house and see some of the magnets that are there. So I'm going to start here in the living room. So how many of you have an alarm at your house? Okay. So alarms use metal switches attached to windows and doors with magnets placed nearby. When the window or door opens, the magnet moves away from the switch and this signals the alarm to sound. So your alarm system uses a magnet. There you go. So there's a magnet with your alarm system. Or it might use a magnet. I don't know if they all do. Some of them do. A purse clasp. So if you have a purse, probably this refers more to the girls in the classroom or your mom or a wallet as well. Some purses and wallets use magnets to keep them closed. So who has ever seen that where you have a magnet to help keep it closed? Yes. Sometimes you need kind of a strong one to keep it closed. Okay. Then we've got an a speaker. Speakers have magnets that help move sound waves into the air. Isn't that interesting? So we have magnets and speakers. In the kitchen, a magnetic knife holder pulls our knives to hold them in place. Does anybody have a one like that at their house? Oh, so you have one like that at your house. Very cool. Yes. I'm seeing one of mine and it's on the board. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. So a magnetic knife holder, and we have a few people who have one like that in their house. Then we've got one here on a refrigerator door. And they're not talking about the ones that you have on the refrigerator door. We're talking about refrigerators often have magnets in the doors to help keep them closed. This keeps cold air inside the fridge. So they have them so the door is gonna keep itself closed because otherwise they could stay open and then all the cold air goes out. In addition to the ones that you probably have on the outside, right boys and girls? So it has one on the doors to help keep them closed. Yes. Sometimes when we um, close our Yeah, some, some refrigerators, as a matter of fact, if you don't close them right, they have a little alarm, right? And it'll ring. Yeah. Some people have alarms on them. So, but yes, yeah, some refrigerator doors will have a magnet in them to shut them because people will not shut them all the way. Now let's go upstairs. So here, magnets in the shower curtains. Pull the curtain toward the tub. This helps keep water inside the tub. Have you noticed this on your shower curtains? Yes, they help keep it to your tub. And here is an interesting one. A vacuum's motor has magnets in it. The magnets help turn the fan to create suction. So who knew that a vacuum cleaner had magnets in it? Yes, Logan? There's actually a magnet on the pen. Oh yes, there's a magnet in the pen. Sometimes I'm wearing like a certain jewelry and it'll stick to it, but guess what? It's gonna stick to that. It'll stick to that. And sometimes if I'm wearing hoops, guess what? It'll stick to my hoops. I don't know if it'll stick to these. No, it's not gonna stick to these. Sometimes it'll stick to my silver hoops. So I have to be careful because it'll wanna stick to my hoops as well. I could wear a pen attached to my ear. Then I'll never lose it, right? But yeah, it'll stick to these, stick to these. It look very strange. So yes, these are magnetic. So yes, you are so right, yes. are taped but the ones I think on the desk are magnetic okay 
So there's all sorts of uses for magnets. We use them a lot in a lot of different products. Now, I don't think the whole board, the whole board is not magnetic, boys and girls. So it's not magnetic here. It's just magnetic like in this spot here, not magnetic there. Do you see there's like a little box around it? That's the magnetic area on the board for the pet. Okay, so interesting. So let's move on and see what else we're going to learn about magnets. Does anybody here have like a set of magnets that they play with? Like my um, grandchildren have those those uh, blocks. Who's got those magnet blocks? Those are so much fun to build with, aren't they? Yeah. They're a lot of fun. I love those. Okay. Now, oops, I went too far. I needed to scroll down, not up. So it says, what poles, here we go. What pulls to the poles? Now, boys and girls, here's what we need to know. The shape of a magnet, so there's different shapes of magnets. The shape of a magnet may be a horseshoe, which is this shape, a bar, which would just be kind of a straight magnet, or another four. Like, remember those round ones that we saw bouncing up and down? Those would be a donut shape one. Every magnet has two poles, no matter what shape it is, it has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. So that makes it easy, because have we heard of the north pole? Have we heard of the south pole? Yes. So a magnet has two poles, it has a north pole and a south pole. A magnetic force is strongest near a magnet's pole. So the force a magnet has is strongest near the poles. So the closer to the poles, the strongest the force is going to be. So the farther away from the poles, the weaker the force is going to be. Okay? So here we have got, we're gonna have a video. And it has got some iron filings. Iron filings are small bits of iron. Can you see them right here, boys and girls? These are them. It's like they took some iron and they filed away and now they have these little iron bits. And the iron bits can be used to show the area around a magnet in which the force pulls or pushes. The magnet has a magnetic field that exerts a force on the filings. So we can see how strong the magnet is and we can see the strongest part of the magnet because the filings are going to be attracted to the strongest parts of the magnet. Here is a horseshoe magnet, so let's look at that. Each end of a magnet has a north or south pole. Horseshoe magnets do too. They are the legs of the magnet. Watch as some iron filings are slowly spilled onto this horseshoe magnet. You know that magnetism is a force acting from a distance that you can't see, but because the iron filings are attracted to the magnet, you can actually see this magnet's magnetic field. Notice that the filings are more strongly attracted as the poles get closer together. It's there that the magnetic field is strongest. So, look at where all the, do you see where all the files are, filings are? They're all right in here. Because that is where the pull of the, the magnetic force is. That's where the north and south poles of the magnet are. So that is where most of the force is. So that is where all the filings are being pulled. Right here, there's less here, right? There's less there, but there's more right here because that it's closer to the north and the south pole because that's where all the forces of the magnet. Okay, so now let's look at a bar magnet. Bar magnet. Take a look at this bar magnet. 
One end is the North Pole. The other end is the South Pole. Notice that as iron filings are shaken onto the magnet, they arrange themselves in patterns, almost like magic. The North and South Poles of the filings are arranging themselves in the magnet's magnetic field. If you looked at the magnet from the side, you would see that some of the filings are even sticking up above the bar magnet. The magnetic field extends in all directions from the North Pole wrapping back. Okay, so isn't that interesting, boys and girls? Okay, so we're gonna stop now and we'll finish next time.